As winter settles in, the days of bright blooms and buzzing bees are behind Granite Staters. They will reemerge in the spring thaw, but while you wait, there are some creative artists who are making sure their flowers can weather all the seasons. Instead of sitting in front of a computer all day, Patricia Moody takes them apart. Okay, this is the, that's the screen. You can see it's been broken. But what I want is this stuff that's behind it. Believe it or not, she takes those layers and turns them into this. Pat discovered these raw materials while working with a recycling nonprofit in Fairbanks, Alaska. I started opening up the computers and it was just too cool. So I just started trying to trying to take them out of their context of being a computer and treating them like textures and shapes and colors. So I thought of making a floral arrangement and then I decided, well, the floral arrangement is that's really works, but it'll just be a pretty plastic flower arrangement. So I had to add I had to add the light to it. Admittedly, not a green thumb, this type of flower arranging works better for Patricia's engineering-oriented mind. Twist it to give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional feel to it. The pretty colors. <laughs> and I, I, I like making stuff that other people like that they, they can identify with and it's just, it's easy and, and it's a challenge to see if I can copy a particular flower that I think is really beautiful. How do I take a, how do I take this two dimensional substance or uh, material and turn it, turn it into something that's three dimensional and, and nice to look at. around the shop at Zinnia and Birch in Goffstown, and you'd think these flower arrangements require watering. I think the biggest thing um, at events when we're outside, there will be bees that are gravitating towards us <laughs> because they think they're real, and I feel like that's the biggest compliment when a bee thinks that your flowers are real. These beautiful bouquets are made out of wood. It is made from the Shola plant, which is grown in India and Thailand. There's some amazing artists out there that shave this plant into super thin sheets, which are then made into flowers. Um, and it's porous, lightweight, just like balsa wood. Melissa Castle Merva discovered wood flowers while planning her wedding out of state. I was trying to find ways to DIY my wedding and the first one that comes up is flowers and silks can be a little tacky in my opinion or I don't know I just didn't feel the foam and all the things so I found wood flowers. A lot goes into each bouquet painting, stemming and arranging each flower. Our thing is the art of giving. We create art that people give to people because they're they want to send in I love you gift or happy birthday. And honestly, the biggest thing is condolences. Everyone wants to compare it to fresh flowers, to be honest, and I just don't. Like, I can't compete with Mother Nature. She does beautiful things. But here's the thing. There are times when you're gonna wanna send fresh flowers because it's fresh and they're gorgeous. But there's times when you wanna send something that's gonna last and you want something that they're going to have to remember or you want a piece that you're always gonna have. You want it. You love peonies and you want peonies on your kitchen counter 24-7, 365 days of the year, that's when you come to me. That's when you come to Zinnia Birch. At Twigs Gallery in Boscawin, Emily Preston is giving us a whole new view on the term cut flowers. These are kirigami paper flowers, and kirigami is a Japanese art form that's cut 
of paper instead of just folded. We think of origami, but kirigami is that. And I got into it because my niece last Christmas gave me a book on Japanese paper flowers. I am making a cosmos because I have some beautiful ones growing in my yard. Rolling, creasing, bending, there is an art in the intricate details of these paper petals. You're layering and you're curving, um, and it can be it can be a little bit of a meditative process because you've got, there's a lot of, you know, you're repeating these shapes because petals are repeated. Um, and then you're, you're doing these, each one has to be individually handled to curve them. And that just makes it uh, a fun thing to do. It's not just cutting out, then you're able to sort of try to tweak the flower and make it look a little more realistic. A retired wildlife biologist turned artist, Emily loves sharing her newfound knowledge with anyone looking to learn. You have to be somewhat careful, but flowers aren't perfect. So if you're cutting out the paper and it's not perfect, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's, it's a fun and creative thing to do that, that as long as you can operate a pair of scissors, um, you can do it. You can make up flowers. You don't have to copy a flower. You can just make up something completely wild and just have a lot of fun with that. Mm -hmm.